Guess guess I'm just leaving. Haha! <laughs> Drastical here again. How come I can't ride it? So we're heading towards uh Brothel Ah, here we go. Isaac's the cobblers. I think we needed to come here. Hello, my good man. Good evening, Mr. Solomonovich. Solomonovich. Good evening, Doctor. What a pleasure to see you again. It's a fucking cool name. Sounds like the name of a um, of a really cool villain. I thought that was a giant sausage then. But what is that? Weird. Have you finished converting the harnesses? Yes, just now. I got a little behind because of all the commotion. Hello? Commotion? Don't you start. Three days ago, the very afternoon that you passed by, there was a chase throughout the neighborhood. Hundreds of people were chasing one man, claiming he was responsible for the murders these last few days. Schmonts! It was awful! I hope those maniacs didn't catch him. Better the police should. Oh, yes. People who think they're helping by, um, by sentencing somebody they don't like as the, uh, well, as the murderer, because... They think it's the murderer, yeah. That is the, like, the worst... What did they call it? Um, I, I've read something recently. And it was like... um, it, it was like civilians think... Like, they're trying to help, but in fact they're making it worse. <laughs> Thanks. But not really. Tell me, did John Pizer turn himself in to the police? Things unfolded as they should. Look in the newspaper, the daily news from today. Farewell, Isaac. Goodbye, Doctor. Thanks, chap. Uh, the Daily News. Oh, we've got the Daily News. The Star. East London Advertiser. Uh, mutilations of bodies. I really don't want to read all this crap. Uh, leather apron. I think this is basically saying that he handed himself in. Uh... anti jurist suspicions. What fucking shit is shitty society we live in? The arrests were only considered to be the most important for those of Polish Jew, a Polish Jew named Paisa near the scene of the crime and a man named Piggott at Gravesend. Paisa was released last evening but Piggott being considered to be insane is to be detained under observation. Great. You've considered him to be insane. That's not medically. You've just considered him to be insane. Thanks. Yes, sir. That's just what you need. What fuck are you looking at? Everyone's <laughs> still pissed. Brilliant. Lady with flowers. 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 We can give this guy the harnesses. Good evening, Dr. Gibbons. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Monkey. Watson. Dr. Gibbons. Formaldehyde. Do you have any formalin? Formal Isn't no, formalin formaldehyde? have it in university hospitals to conserve anatomical specimens in jars. But in a little clinic like mine, we don't keep anything but bad memories. Fucking hell, mate. What kind of clinic is this? That's like the most depressing doctor I've seen. Imagine if this guy was your doctor. Here you go, here's your prescription of death. What a cock. Did you keep the cane we spoke of last time? I was going to sell it tomorrow, would you believe, having not heard word. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor Watson. Don't have to physically give him the harnesses. Retrieve Sickert's cane at all costs. Yeah, I know. I don't know why you couldn't have just give him the harness. Oh, I, I have to yes, physically doctor. hand it to him. Here you go. Here are your harnesses, Doctor. They are top quality, I'd say. Definitely worth the prize of this walking stick. Here, it's yours. Why does this guy need so many harnesses? Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor Watson. It's like I don't see a lot of um. Bellas. I don't see a lot of people with um, amputated legs. Yeah, he wants like a dozen harnesses. Do I not need to take the cane? Did he? I know, he he actually gave it to me. Um, I don't need to walk. I can um, TP there, can't I? As the brothel. 
Can I... Is... <laughs> Did you hear that? Can I get a refill, please? That guy who said that is definitely not English. What? What are they getting a refill of? Are you like... If you notice, like, there's teacups and tea. But it sounds like they're having a, um, a wine shindig. And there's a fucking gun here. Is that for when people get really angry with you and you just think, oh, fuck, I'll just put the piece out and poof, pop a cap in them. Good evening, ma'am. Um, your door was open. Isn't that a little dangerous? Hello, doctor. Don't worry. Oh. The looks of anyone who enters doesn't please me. Me and my pistol know how to convince them to leave. That's very odd because even coppers in these days didn't have guns. They had big fucking truncheons, didn't they? Smack your fucking bed. Fucking smack your head in with them. Um. See? How is Lucy keeping? She's doing well, Doctor. But believe me, it won't last. Rare are the girls who can build a future in our profession. Not really a future, is it, really? It's, it's not like you can raise kids being a prostitute in the 1800s, unfortunately. In fact, you can't really have kids in these days, can you? You can barely afford to feed yourself. You don't want to bring a sprog into, the, uh, into this world. Do you happen to know Annie Chapman, the poor woman who was killed three days ago? Dark Annie? Puh. Like all the drifters in the area, I've seen her once or twice. With respect to the dead, Annie really was the bottom of the barrel. Oh, my word. Well, in our profession, the pretty young ones go out when night has barely fallen and don't have a problem finding takers. But poor girls like Annie or Polly Nichols, who aren't as tender and are often sick, sometimes trudge around for a whole night in the cold and the rain before landing a client. And that doesn't help their appearances either. They don't have much choice about paying for a bed for a few hours, a glass of gin or a hot meal. How terribly sad. <sighs> That's the price of survival in Whitechapel, my angel. One of my girls knew Annie for some time. They bought some jewellery on the black market, I think. Jewellery? How could Annie Chapman have possibly afforded jewellery? <laughs> Luxuries for a woman are always relative to her condition, Doctor. As a matter of fact, it was real cheap junk. Annie got three assorted brass rings, I think. <laughs> it's been said I have a memory for jewellery. That was what her eye uh, was on her fingers, that um, Jack took, wasn't it? I found the cane that was stolen from your client. Here it is. Doctor, you are a real saint, I can see that. I'll finally be able to present my bill to this damned painter. If by chance you see him, tell him that a little surprise awaits him here. Man, he's going to go there thinking, hey, hey. A surprise, eh? <laughs> you told me you Here's your bill. some information on this Dr. Tumblety. Agreed. He's a Canadian or an American. He parades from time to time through the neighbourhood in a 50-guinea suit and acts like a doctor. But for business, he isn't worth it. This damn Yankee hates women. The few times that he was approached by the girls, he spit on them, all what? the while hurling insults. It would seem that he was hunting for the bad boys. He's looking for trouble, that animal. Does he frequent any pub in particular? Aye, the Wasp's Nest on Burner Street, I think. A seedy spot, even by our standards. Well, we've seen the wasp's nest. Very well. I shall let you get back to work, ma. See you soon, my love. Well, at least we know our destination now. The wasp's nest, which is here. I keep forgetting you can uh, keep your around. There's not much need to walk. The wasp's nest. This pub looks even more disreputable than the Golden Lion in Baker Street. The Golden Lion sounds cool. Much cooler than the Wasp's Nest. Why has this guy always got a lady with him? Like, why don't you just get married, dude? Like... Can you imagine... Like, just for a second, do you imagine how much... 
things she's put in her mouth and you're sitting there tonguing her. Let's just 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 let that spin around in your head for a while, mate. That's right, go and kiss her. That's right. All those men she's been with are now in your mouth. Let's give him a surprise, shall we? Well, I know you. Why? We met at Miss Pullman's the other day. So you've come to slum it in Whitechapel, eh? Uh. Do you know Dr. Tumblety, a Canadian or American chap? Quite an extravagant dresser. Frequents this pub now and then. Are you intimate? Um, no. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> I just wanted to prove my discretion concerning this man, in so much and so far as I know him. You wouldn't like it if one day the tables were turned and everyone was talking about why you were in the borough, isn't that so? So he's gay, and the like. This guy's really throwing shade, isn't he? Sounds like he is. As it happens, I saw Miss Pullman recently. She told me that she couldn't wait to see you again. She said something <laughs> about a surprise that is waiting for you at her establishment. Why, that is some of the best news I've heard, my friend. As thanks, I would like to let you in on a secret. The man that you were talking about, and whom I happen to know by sight, passed by and went through that little door that you see over there. Another man let him in. They weren't together for more than a few minutes, to be sure, eh? Information that I needed. Thank you, well, sir. I will continue my search. Ah, uh, love. Why do you keep what talking about love? This person trying to imply. Oh, this matter is beyond me. Guys, just fucking Batman out of here. So I need to go in here. Let's knock on the door. Hello. Hey, you can't go in there. It's private. Got it? Does it say private on the door, mate? I'm supposed to bloody know. Oi, oi. <laughs> Greetings, my good man. Could I have a pint? Mm. Don't do it, Watson. This would be like piss beer served in a shitty glass. Here, Gov. Tumblety. I've been told that Dr. Tumblety might be found around here. Jack the Tumblety. I don't do a roll call of all the drunkards here. I've got my hands full just making sure I get their money. Yes, all these people that are in your establishment. That one man. <laughs> Don't people pay when they order? Nah, look at that little scribbler there. Completely dead drunk. Tonight's tally is about as long as his arm. If he skips out, I'll be in for a guinea almost. Why would you not charge them up front? I don't get it. Surely you don't go to the pub nowadays and say, I'll have a pint. I'll pay you when I leave. But I'll never leave. I wonder you have your money, you fool. What's behind that locked door over there? Can I go in? Not likely. And let me be unless you're wanting a drink, got it? Alright, mate. Get asked with Dr. Watson. Goodbye, my friend. Oi, proper... That's it. That's what it. I don't get it. I don't want that piss fucking drink. Look at that's not beer. That piss. Talk to this guy. <laughs> Good evening, sir. It'll be the cool of my career, Governor said. Ha! <laughs> You'll make loads of dots of the paper, he said. Journalist, eh? You're a journalist? That's so. Tom Bulling at your service. <laughs> the Whitechapel ferret. The wizard with the scoop. You don't appear to be in a state to write anything, my friend. You're mistaken. Whiskey passes through the blood and turns into ink. Simple. <laughs> you see... Mugs and inkwells are all the same. Don't you think you should settle your tab and go home? My red ink? Where's my red ink? I won't even pay half a halfpenny if they don't return my red ink. It's my blood you hear. Very well. I'll be on my way. <coughs> okay. Red ink. Somebody... Somebody steal his ink. Oh. This is the sink where the barmaid puts the glasses to soak. Look, red ink. What's that doing here? The bottle is closed. There must still be some ink inside, and it looks like a glass. The barmaid must have put ink into the sink by mistake. 
Right. Do I get in your way? Me? If you'll excuse me, sir. Fuck's this guy's problem? Fuck off. Say to that. I'm fire your barmaid. You can't tell a fucking glass from a bloody bottle of ink. She's a fucking idiot. Stupid woman. You're the best. The boss told me. My red ink. Well, where's she be? Is this guy going to fucking write anything if he's absolutely shit-faced? I found your red ink, my friend. You should settle up and head home. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. The spring-heeled phantom will be revived. Is that all I needed to do? Now would it... Not take that. Did he just leave his ink behind? Wow, it's not like... I just realised how smoky it is in here. God, it must bloody stink. Nobody's opened the window. This whole building is full of smoke. Some nice cool smoke effects there. All the smoke's drawing to one side. It's all slowly moving to the left. It's very weird. <laughs> You're gonna yeah. let me in that door, now? Paid up, Here dickhead. It's on the journalist, my friend. I owe you one. The next one is on me. What'll it be? Nothing, thanks. But I may need your help. Uh, access to the locked door. Listen, my friend. I would like you to let me in the door over there. You're a bobby. A peeler? Absolutely not, my friend. I am a doctor. Fine. I owe you this, at least. There's a bloke behind that door there. No pity Bluto. Let's just say he wants to lay low for a moment. So I don't think you'll be opening the door just now. Unless... Tell him you have word from Squibby. That'll open the door. But who can say what'll happen when the door closes? Goodbye, my friend. Oi, that's it. I don't get it. Why does it keep saying that? Let me in. I I have news from Squibby. But stay calm. And who are you? Where's Squibby? He's out. To be honest, I don't actually know this Squibby chap. I was actually wondering if you knew Dr. Tumblety, a Canadian or American fellow. He came in... Sure we know him. Excellent. Can you... You know about gas? I'm afraid not. I am a doctor. Then I ain't interested. You can be leaving now. But if I find out who snitched to the peelers, I'll find you. Got it? But I can pay you for... Keep your coins for the paupers, or one of the gas boys who ain't afraid of nothing and knows how to hold his tongue. You bring him to me, I'll meet with you. Wow. Guy's basically just told me to fuck off. What's his name? Bluto. Keep your coins for the paupers. He said that like... <laughs> like, like... I was offering him money. I mean, I, I said I would pay him. I did say that I would actually pay him. He obviously doesn't know the fuck he's talking about. Excuse me, Doctor, but I must take Mr. Richardson's statement. Oh, I talked to the wrong one. I needed to talk to this chap. May I introduce myself? I'm Dr. Watson. I am... You want to be the chap what writes the detective stories in that there paper? Well... Yes, indeed, my stories have been published in the Strand. Go oh, blimey, wanna tell me, old mum? It would seem your testimony is the subject of some debate. Could you tell me what it was about? Ah, uh, don't we tell you I'm a bit befuddled about the times that I told them. But it can't be so. I knows what I sees and what I don't sees that morning. What did you see, or what didn't you see? And at what time, would you say? I'll tell you this for nothing. It's me old mum who lives at the house where the body was found out back in the garden. She has her shop at the bottom to the right of the stairs. Her door was broken down not too far back because it's a real zoo it is. Right, the morning it happened, I head that way to see if me old mum has finally had the place broken into. It was caught to five when I got there. 
That I'll swear on me dear old mum's life. I had a look round to see if the cellar had been taken. No. I had a little sit down on the stairs by the courtyard, because me shoes were causing me no end of pain, and I had a cut and all. I didn't seize a single thing below the steps, Doctor, not one single thing. If there was some bird all covered in blood, taint no how I could have missed that, even if it were night time. Right, five minutes after getting to number 29, I had to clip off. And now they tells me that either I can't tell time no more, or I was fixing me loafer next to a stiff that was still steaming. All right then, evening gents. <laughs> Just walks off. Brilliant. That is very suspicious. Yes, Doctor? So, how far along are the investigations into these two recent murders? Everyone around here believes both crimes were committed by the same man. But as for the Hanbury Street and Bucks Row crimes, nobody has heard or seen a thing. By the way, have you heard of a Dr. Tumblety? Um, no. Is it important? Yes. Well, no, maybe. Actually, I don't know. I have heard about this man, his frequent nocturnal outings and bizarre behaviour. What does this chap look like, Doctor? And where can we find him? The last I heard was that he was staying at Finley's place, the man who was looking for me a few days ago. It would greatly assist us if you could ask Finley what your strange associate looks like. We could then see if the description matches any witness accounts. Right. I will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor.